Good morning, church. It is indeed a privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. I want to say a happy Father's Day to all the amazing fathers. I pray that you have an amazing, amazing day today. Let us just worship the Lord this morning. Come on, let us just give him praise this morning. For he is great. And there is none like him this morning. He deserves the glory this morning.
there this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the only, only one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the rock this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to take up this, this morning stays on our friend. Come, let us praise. Lift up your eyes to the Lord. Come, let us praise. Lift up your eyes to the Lord. Come, let us praise.
Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hands is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. And right now, I know you're able. And my God comes to our
your hands together for your worship. Before we bring our speaker, we have a an item from our little sister, Araya Taylor. So we're going to ask Araya to come. no stranger, a woman of God, one who takes whatever she does seriously. And so at this point in time, I want us to welcome our dear sister, who would bring the word for us this morning, Sister Matthews. Thank you, Brother Samuel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the presence of the best Father. Hallelujah. Like you didn't hear me. It is good to be in the presence of the best Father. He's got so many children. He owns the world. And he's never disowned any of his children. Could any earthly father measure up to that? I think not. So let's give a... a the rousing clap offering to the best father in the world. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what you're doing exams and this is a final paper and you know everything rests on the final paper. You tremble like a leaf. You read in this paper and you're like, huh? I wonder if you can answer any of these questions or if you can answer them. You wonder if you can live up to expectations, eh? Ah, but thank God for the Holy Spirit this morning. I must say thank you to Pastor Taylor in his absence and the church board for giving me the privilege to speak with us this morning. It's been a long time since I've been up here on Sunday morning. So I'm just kind of wetting my feet again, right, Sister Abraham? So you pray warriors down there, just be praying for me that the Holy Spirit has his way. So let's bow our heads and pray. Our oh, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that this is the day you have made and there as your children. We can rejoice and be glad in it. As I stand here today, God, I ask for your Holy Spirit's anointing. I ask for clarity of thought and speech so that I would rightly divide your word of truth. Hide me behind the cross, Father, and as we just have all of the glory belongs to you. So let your anointing break the yokes, Father. Let it saturate this place. Let there be freedom in this place, O oh God. Anoint the ears and the hearts and the minds of your children. And as we sit at your feet and learn, O oh God, it will make a difference in our lives. Continue to bless, I pray, and I crave your anointing and your help. Lord God, 
And I thank you for all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now the sermon this morning is entitled simply, God's Gifts to Us, Isaiah 9 and verse 6. So let's turn to Isaiah 9 and verse 6 and we're going to read that together. It's on the overhead, so let's go. One, two, three. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now you notice why I said it's God's gifts? No man on earth gives us all these gifts, and they really can't. They're not able. Now you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute. We hear this thing a lot at Christmas time. What's wrong with this woman? It's only June. But you know, the word of the Lord says, he is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. So his word is for all seasons. And times are never too old or out of tune. Like the young people tell one another these days. You tell them something they don't want to hear. Hey, hey now hold up. You with your out of time talking. Ah, ah, ah. God's word is forever sure. Now, it's very relevant, not only for the church and its functions, but for every single thing. Every island, country, province is ruled by a government. Whether we elect them democratically, whether they overthrow the one that's there, governments are here to stay. Nothing has affected the history of man like the coming of Jesus. It is still Jesus who divides between you and me and the world. With him, peace is like a river flowing. To this hour, men are trying to create a paradise, a utopian or perfect society. But it ain't happening, not under this sun, moon, and stars. Never has fear swept over the land as now. You know, all little sinvins and the grenadines every weekend, one, two, three, four killings. We can't find the criminals up to now, eh? Because nobody talking. We're afraid to talk because we will be the next on the hit list. So we have acts of stupidity, revenge, lawlessness. My God, it is like open season with survival of the fittest. From this moral disintegration, all it appears to be lost for everyone. Save and accept that Jesus fills the place God has ordained. Put Jesus where he was sent to fulfill and there will be an end to all of this chaos and bloodletting, the divorce and all of those things that make us want to hide. Governments of the day are facing such turmoil and confusion. They in their world over, we mistrust them. They corrupt. They competing for spaces. They are fighting for positions. They are doing all the unexplainable things that we don't expect. Yet, unfortunately, many continue to depend solely on governments, only to be disappointed time after time. Lord have mercy. And we wonder why so many persons are angry, bitter, short-tempered, don't care, make unhealthy choices, and get carried away by wrong influences. It's like the folks would tell us, too much pressure and too little ability to balance or maintain equilibrium. Balance and life is all about balance. You could balance, you could stand straight, right? If you can't balance, you topple over. Isaiah 9 that we just read offers us hope in these hopeless situations we find ourselves in. Let us see if we can unpack the verse to make it relevant to us. The glory of our Messiah would reign and these are some of the aspects of his character. Number one, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And we know John 3.16 from the back of our eyes. We go, as soon as somebody says John 3.16, we quote it before the final chapter. All right? That is relevant. So that is where this was born from. When Isaiah was prophesying about the birth of Jesus, he said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. What double message is in there? 
that God gave his only begotten son, who matured, who grew up, to pay the ultimate sacrifice for us on, the, on Calvary's cross. That's the son doing all of that. We understand the hand of the Holy Spirit here when the prophecy of Jesus' birth was given. This glorious prophecy of the birth of the Messiah reminds us and Israel that the victory-bringing Messiah would be a man. The child would be a man, but more than a man. The child could be born because the humanity of Jesus had a starting point. Remember, he's spirit, soul, and body. He had a natural body for a reason. He is the eternal Son of God, the second person of the Godhead. He is eternal and exists forever as Son, even before adding humanity to his deity. That Jesus is both man and God tells us that man is really made in the image of God. We see that in Genesis 1 and verse 26. Jesus re remains a man eternally. Earthly fathers are proud of their children, especially when they have sons, and they brag about them. Even the absentee ones boast when their children turn out to be something good. Am I right? Oh, I tell you. People don't know you, but I have a son, you know. You hear what my son do? You hear what my daughter do? Lord have mercy on these absentee fathers. But you know, they, had a, they have a role to play, you know. They were part of us being born into this world. Never mind them with all their faults and failures. All right? So, we understand that that is what they do. And the next part is, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And here we don't mean the government that we vote for every five or ten years, wherever we live. Eh? This government is eternally progressing. The government of the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, this will be fulfilled in the millennium, at the end of the world. When Jesus Christ would rule on earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The ultimate fulfillment of this promise is still waiting, but we can still see the government upon his shoulder in many ways. Gail Irwin wrote about the government of, of God and his promises, both ultimately and right now. So we ask the question, what would this government look like? First, it would look like a king, the best king that ever was written about. Not King Charles III, not any of them people who were in on this earth, okay? Politicians, in the first statement he made, he said that politicians of this day look for what they can get for you, from you. Jesus looks for what he can do for you, all right? Leaders of this day surround themselves with servants. Jesus surrounds us with his servanthood. Leaders of this day use their power to build their empire. Jesus uses his power to wash our feet and to make us clean and comfortable. Leaders of this day trade their influence for money. It's all about the money. It's all about the dust. It's all about the cash. God so loved us that he gave his only son to die for us. Generals and rulers of this day need regular wars to keep their weapons and skills up to date. Like the one we have going on in Ukraine right now and ensure their own advancement. Jesus brings peace and rest to our hearts. The higher the plane of importance one reaches in this world, the more hard he becomes to find. Jesus is Emmanuel forever and forever always with us. His promise to never leave us or forsake us still stands. Now earthly fathers are head of their households. They provide generally lead, guide, discipline. Some of them abuse. They make some unreasonable demands. They lay down the rules. Sometimes they are too harsh. They say it's my way or the highway. A God of God, son, bless his heart to say to his mother one day, Mom, you don't see that has outlived his usefulness. He doesn't do anything wrong. He doesn't pay any bills. He don't speak with me. I'm 10 years old. He does nothing. If something is wrong, you have to call the handyman. So, you know what? He's outlasted his usefulness. Ask him to leave. When things go wrong, you would still call the handyman and pray. Lord, what a character assassination of a 10-year-old of the father. And the father was right. You know who got the blame for the child being so outspoken? No, 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 no. Your humble servant. 
I was told the child spends too much time with me and he reasons like I do and he says it like he sees it. All right, unfortunately, here's my godson, eh? They can't throw him away. Not so with Jesus. He is never out of character. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. All right? So his name is Wonderful. How many of us people refer to us Wonderful? While we're walking by the street, we mind any old business. Hey, I see him a good day. I see he a good day. I see she. He doesn't have nothing good enough. He's wonderful to deal with. It's kind of like, you're not interfering with these people, but that's what we get. But you see the contrast. You know that that happens in the natural. If we hear the name again, or hear other people's encounters with them, we still consider the same thing. Oh yeah, they know that. It's very fine. Are they wonderful? Jesus is never out of character. The glory of who he is and what he has done for us should fill us with wonder. You can never really look at Jesus, really know him and be bold. He is wonderful and will fill your heart and mind with amazement. He comforts, he heals, he mends the broken hearts, he provides, he cares for us, he restores us when we fall, he strengthens us when we, when we are weak, he lifts us up when we are down, walks with us. Oh my goodness, he's truly wonderful. All right, the word wonderful has overtones of deity, and we find this in Judges 13, verse 18. He's a counselor. The world is full of counselors these days. Everybody is a counselor. Everybody knows better than you do. I'm a social worker, right, by profession. I tell people counseling is a very itsy bitsy part of what I do because social work embodies a whole lot of other things. But every Harry Joe is a counselor. You know, we have a problem these days with them. I describe them as, because it's the Abraham call them, where she lived too far, they ain't coming. This is Sherman call them, where's that place? I don't know, so I'm not going. The PS says, you got to go. No, I'm not going. Now, when the PS insists that they go, let me tell you something, eh? I am more qualified than you. You can't make me go. This is what our system has fallen to. All right? But you know, when we call on the Lord, you don't get that, you know. So my description for them is everybody has a miss, a sir, and a master. Because they're telling you, I got a bachelor's degree, you know. I'm a master's, you know, and I studied it soon, so and so. And worse yet, I got a PhD. Don't talk to me because you're not qualified. That's what we have in the service. But I thank God for the counselor we have. At times, we are disappointed in a manner which our issues are handled. It's with the natural counselors, and we wipe them off. For me, not me and he again. Not me and she again. I don't want to hear them, no matter what they're telling me. But bless the Lord. Jesus is the one fit to guide our lives and should be the Christian's immediate resource counselor. Jesus can help you with your problems. He may use the presence and word of another Christian to do it. But Jesus is the counselor, right? And we know in, in my line of work, the only two things you're not supposed to release is if I say I'm going to kill Sister Hoyt, or I'm going to poison Brother Lenore food. Those are the only two things you're allowed to say. But you just leave your Sister Marilyn, and Lord, they're on the phone, they're on all the devices. You know who just been here? No, 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 no. You're not fit. You're really not ready for this noble provision. But some of them don't get that. Because you take everything we should say. They forget your training. But I'm thankful to God for the provision of the training that the Holy Spirit affords us. So everything we tell him, no matter how we come, battered, bruised, born, crying, we are the last breath we fall along in his presence. That is when the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. We could tell him everything. He does not breathe a word to anybody else. He doesn't need to. He's God. As part of the song says, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And in this, you know, I throw this in. We ought to remember that Eve listens to the devil's counsel and ruin the world that then was. Jesus gave us wisdom. Jesus is our counselor in the sense that as God the Son, he takes counsel with the Father and the Holy Spirit for our own good. The high counsel of God of the Godhead brought forth our salvation. 
the counsel of Jesus guides our lives. Remember that there is nothing that ever happens to us that escapes God. Take hope. He is working it out for our good. As Romans 8.28 reminds us that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So a father's judgments, he makes some judgments and he gives us wise counsel. He don't like to see any of his children go astray. Now the mighty God, these days we hear a lot about might. He or she said it's strong, the powerful. I had a niece who came complaining to me one day. And when she was finished, she said, Auntie Barbara, he believed because he began strong that right is might, but I know better. And that is how a lot of people oppress people these days. They don't know that they're doing it, but that's the word. So they hired mighty, they puffed up, and they like to tell you they're large and in charge. They're the heavy, they're the boss. And they make you tremble in their presence. Eh? They forget that we serve a mighty God. The Messiah is the mighty God. He is the God of all creation and glory. The Lord who reigns in heaven, the one worthy of our worship and praise. I must remind us, we sing an awful song, a really lovely song. The song that spells it out. Mighty God, I worship you. Holy One, I bless your name. Your God, I am all by yourself. Which one of us is God all by ourselves? We can't have a lift up we had if God don't give us the strength to well, They should humble us all as we are in the presence of the one who spoke creation into being. While we enjoy his blessings, let us remember how he has power and don't get too big for ourselves and become show-offs and other people. Let's remember Nebuchadnezzar, who was reduced to eating and living like an animal for seven years. Pastor Abraham, bring that scripture to us, please. Daniel 4, from verse 30 to 37. Because sometimes, you know, we really get too big for our britches, eh? We forget that God came with all of these attributes for us. The king spake and said, It's not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of, king, of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. God talk about, talk about being self-righteous. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like the eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselor's head goes again, and my Lord sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom an excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. You see what happened from king to animal? And a lot of times you don't get to the animal stage, you know. But we do fall, some of us, we fall hard. We fall and we get broken, we get beaten, we get all kinds of things. 
And this was what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. God had established him, but he failed to realize at a particular time that there was might and God, there's none like God. So he was trying to be equal with himself. You know, he's walking around. And some of us are like that. Oh, look what I've done. I said that, you know, I did that, you know. And we're so proud. We can't even find the space to say, thank God for the wisdom he gave me to do that. And that's where we should keep God. He is the author of everything we've got. All right? And he really got so out of character that he forgot that there was God until he was reduced to eating grass and he was outside like an animal. You know, we pass and we see him, you know what we say when people fall? Oh God, Nabi, Nabi, he been up there? Nabi, she been to do that? Because we do that naturally. Some of us, we sorry for people when they fall. Most of us rejoice, yeah. He been too high, he been too cocky, he been too fresh, been... but we remember that the Lord says the remnant would return, the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. And we extend the right hand of fellowship to all those who love the Lord Jesus in sincerity and truth. Father's might is in their authority. They would accept standard, their expectations of us, the ways they use to challenge us. And sometimes we are reminded of their limited power when we are told sometimes to man or at can't live in one hole. Anybody ever tell you if your parents ever told you that? They have a nice way of reminding us who's boss around here, you know. I made you, you know, you, you, you watch how you talk to me and, they, you know, watch your mouth. When they tell you watch your mouth, man, you don't want anybody to hear that they told you that, you know. Man, they call the tail that you don't have and you find a hole to crawl in. All right? So we are small, they are big, so we obey or else. The everlasting Father. The never-ending Father. The idea in those Hebrew words is that Jesus is the source or author of all eternity. That he is the creator himself. He outlasts and outlives everything and everyone. We can't recycle him, banish him, lock him up. He is creator, sustained ruler. He keeps, he is a decision maker, the all-encompassing God. I wonder sometimes if you realize whose presence we are in and who we serve in. Kind of like any old thing about God. You know, me tired, but me go go for five minutes. That's how we factor God in our schedules, you know. I mean, I feel for God today. Me go go next week. I mean, I feel for do that. Let somebody else do them. You know, we like to pass the buck because we figure that no matter what it is, somebody else should be doing. And that's how we learn. We learn from each other. Remember, we are building God's kingdom. And we sing a lot. He has no rival, no equal, no competition, no second, no deputy. He is the supreme being. No wonder I love John's account of the everlasting Father in Revelation 21 and verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And sometimes you want to know where God come from. I don't know. He's not recycling himself, you know. He made the beginning. He's there with us all through the phases, and he is the end. I long for this day, brethren, don't you? I long for the day when we don't have people saying all oh, manner of quality of evil against us. I long for the day when we have peace like we never had before. I long for the day when we live as brothers and sisters in unity. I long for the day when we return to be truly our neighbor's keepers and our brothers and sisters' keepers. I long for the day when we encourage each other in the Lord rather than trying to get into the latest bit of promise. I long for the day when we unite and we endeavor to become kingdom builders. I really long for that day. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18 sums it up nicely. So we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, or they only last for a moment. But the things which are not seen are eternal. And you know what? Our earthly fathers don't live forever, you know. Some of them die before we are born. Some of them die soon after we are born. And some of them die while we are maturing. Some of them, they're there, but we count them dead. Because they don't keep in touch, you don't remember us. You ever heard little people tell you that? Yeah, I know he's somewhere, you know, but he don't keep in touch. I know he in St. Vincent, I never see him. 
I don't know what he look like. And it's a reality. It is not a makeup story. Yeah, there, there we were doing some work and the, the 2012 census got burnt, right? Not all of it. There was still some information that we could glean. So I'm looking at the children who tell you these things. I wanted to find out how many of them were there. Because you go here, you get them telling you the same thing in different words. And when we got to the bonds between 0 and 18 years old, we have 34,842 of them. Most are males. So don't listen to people when they tell you we have man shortage. We don't have man shortage in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We've got more males than females in that particular group. And I'm like, I went back and I and I said, no, we need to do something about why they are speaking like this about their harsh realities. Oh, mommy, I had to take him to family court. And the family court money just took long to come. Real. Serious. Sometimes it don't come at all. And by the time they finish putting father in the court and he didn't when they threw him in jail. When he in jail, he could work. You see the reality? Not so our Messiah. He is always there. He is always providing for us. And you know, sometimes when they talk like that, it leaves a bitter taste in our mouth because there are times we can't help them. We send them to the social services and they get run around. Me always getting into trouble, you know. I remember during the last Sufre eruption, I was at a particular center which shall remain unnamed. And there was reason for me to go to the shelter next door to have some food for the center. And I'm hearing them say to people, no food, no day. Well, I got very irate. I said, how could you say to people, no food? Day? They come in the door and they're coming up to you and the food is lying in the place all the way up to your high tower. So I say, bringing out Pavlov and the dog. Eh? They're secreting for the food. Same food that's there for free for everybody, but you tell us, no, 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 you can't do that. So you see what we have happening? So they're not making up stories. They are very aware of their realities. I could never forget the one who said to the principal, who said he didn't have your recorder for the music lesson. He said, well, Father, let me tell you something, you know. You know, I get this year, this end of the month. Me know say how the money spent and all the money done. So mommy and daddy not getting paid till next end of the month, so you got to wait. If you, if you can't wait, put me out and let me one. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, eh? I'm not talking next door neighbor. These are our social realities. But you know, when we go to the good, good father, he says to us one of three things. You can have it now, wait, it will come. And we know if he makes us wait for something, and we still get him beaten up all over the place, it's worth the wait. We get in a whole heap more than we prayed for, or we ask for, or we expected. That's the might of the God we serve. All right? So I know we get this courage because we pray and we pray and people pray for us and we can't see the answers. Hold on. The answer is on the way. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Hang on in there. The final thing he says is that he is the Prince of Peace. Going back to my lovely young people, when you ask them about peace, they spell it nice for you. What do you mean? A piece of something, a piece of bread, a piece of chicken, a piece of KFC, a piece of that? Because that's the idea of peace, eh? We peace it up things. And a lot of times, if we would listen to them, you know, we would be able to pull them before they fall. But we can't like me, me like the lingo. Like one of them tell me, they're they in a particular place, I could hardly laugh. You know, my side just coming up there to do my thing. And the people I meet at the door, I tell them on, and they give me attitude, man, they kill my vibes. So I say, excuse me. Yeah, man, I tell them they kill my vibes. And I'm kind of like, what did you just tell me? He said, Miss Listen, God, I tell you, they kill my vibes. But I still come because I know better. You understand what's going on? A lot of times, that's what we run into. But we talk in peace. What consolation as our world is in total upheaval. Not much peace around us. Every day is a fighting, a chopping up, a shooting, a killing, a robbing. As if we are among Robin Hood and the 40 thieves. And Alibaba and the 40 thieves. Same difference. No peace. You can't put down nothing. Met an elderly lady trying to run the lady. She can't run at all. They see a woman offers to help her take her heavy bags. Why well, she did take. She took everything, hook, line, sink, up, puss, 
credit cards, everybody. The groceries, you know, but those cars, the car finance, you know. Because, you know, it's used to sell people. You realize she comes to this grocery at a particular time every week, so you're waiting for her. I know she got, she got cash, so me, me take all. In for the penny, in for the pound. So, you know, you have to be so careful. It happens so often, it's a way of life. It's fast becoming the norm. Some persons don't look or listen to the news. It's too heartbreaking, it's too depressing. You mention peace sometimes and they come back again. Even the adults are getting into it. What do you mean? Peace or what? Me ain't got nothing to give. So it leaves a bitter taste in the mouth. Even among believers, we have our experiences. Sometimes we are like the politicians. Some supporting this or that one and some on the sidelines trying to make, remain neutral because I don't want to offend anyone. I want to be here in the middle. And sometimes in the middle, that's when they get knocked off quick, right? Be careful. Come off the fences. The last time I checked, right was still right and wrong was wrong. I never forget Jesus' words. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We find this in Matthew 5 and 9. The level of peace differs in each home. It ranges from orderly, quiet, peaceful, harmonious, nice, cool, to bickering, squabbling, noisy, disorderly, and the worst thing out. I don't like you if I ever move. And you have anywhere to go, but gives you the consolation in your head. I'm moving. I trade in places. Sometimes you hear me, and you hear them telling you, me not stop them, me and so and so not agree. And I see eye to eye. We hold different opinions. We on different sides of the fence. We long for peace, as there's nothing normal or wrong here. We are the talk of the neighborhood. Oh, how shameful. Thanks to God, as his children, we strive to be better and honor fathers for fathers indeed. Hebrews 12 and 9 tells us that. So furthermore, it says, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? In God's government, and oh, how I love this. We the saints would judge the world. I know sometimes we, we are humans. I always say, wherever we have humans, we can have disagreements. Show me the, your best friend you never disagree with. I had a friend who had caused out so bad one time. When I quieted down, she came and she said to me, Babs, I said, watch your own Babs. Me, I'm not in the mood for babsing. She said, you're so, you're so gorgeous. I like it when you're upset. I say, you want another so You want another dose? And she said, Babs, cool down, man. Cool down the temperature. I said, cool down with temper. Don't play no Jacob killer me on me today. I'm not in the mood for any of that. I just want to blow up like the volcano. You know, and I let off your skin. My friend is the best thing out. Yo, this is what I was waiting on to tell you. I got the good news, eh? There's a friend, you know. Some other body would have abandoned me and God, right, Sister Hoyt? But that's a friend. I you know sometimes we have to take the thing of peace in doses. It comes, but we have to learn to be at peace with ourselves. And if you can't learn to be at peace with yourself, you would not be at peace with anybody else, no matter how you love them. Sometimes it's like the old folks used to tell us, give, us, give up your right to peace. You know you're right, but the other one think is right. Okay, yeah, take right. But you know they're wrong, but you're, you're rubbing it in. Because that would be like rubbing salt in the wounds. So you, you take it as it comes. And you know, in our churches, God has set up order for peace. If we can't agree, there are certain levels of authority we could report to. We have the district superintendent, we have the church boards, we have the local orders of reverends and pastors, we have the elders and the leadership, we have various committees. We're not left alone. There must be somebody who could broke a peace when we disagree. But you know, our Messiah is the Prince of Peace. He is the one who makes peace, especially between God and man. Jesus himself reminded us that when he was here, that he is in our peace because in the world we find tribulations. But in him we find all the peace. So when we need counsel, let us remember that he's the counselor. Never mind everything around us is chaotic. He's never left us. 
When we need strength, let us remember that he's mighty and strong. When new terrors spring up suddenly, threats from every quarter, let us re rely on the mighty God. When we are inwardly tossed by various tempests, and when Satan attempts to disturb our consciences, let us remember that Christ is the Prince of Peace and that he will allay our fears. Now lessons from the text. There is no temptation that God cannot understand. Remember, unto us a child is born, and the text repeats itself. There is no struggle or sadness with which he cannot sympathize. There is no hardship or difficulty for which he cannot provide strength to endure. Finally, brethren, the outlook is bleak, but we are assured again that unto us a son is a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In this kind of government, we are included, looked after, get our benefits, are covered by the blood and held in the hollow of God's hands. We are physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally secured. Nothing can compare to this wholeness. And we need to remember that he's still the best, best father. There is no God who can, com who can compare to him. And you know, he gave us all of these promises for life here on earth. In the new millennium, when we, be, when we live with him once more on the earth, there will be no need for all of these things because we will have them embedded in us and he will not be in the new kingdom settling any disputes, any quarrels. I found an excellent quote about fathers and I think this son must have had a really good upbringing. This is what he says about his father. I think that my strong determination for justice comes from the very strong, dynamic personality of my father. I have rarely ever met a person more fearless and courageous than my father. The thing that I admire most about my dad is his genuine Christian character. He is a man of real integrity deeply committed to the moral and ethical principles. He is conscientious in all of his undertakings. If I had a problem, I could always call daddy. And this quote is taken from one of the many truths that the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said. Remember he died really young, but he really had a, a rich experience with the Lord. So we need to remember that. And finally, it is a wise father who knows his own child. Nobody knows us like our parents do it. Sometimes we think we could pull a fast one. But uh -uh. if somebody come to complain, you know which one of us is the mischievous one. They say, no, 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 my child didn't pass there. They stand up for us when they are in our lives. So let us, you know, we have a lot of children who come here who never had good experiences with their fathers or their parents for that matter. Let us be the circle that embraces them and gives them the confidence. Let us be the teachers passing on the good lessons and the good character traits and all that they need. When things go wrong, let us be the arms that they run to, knowing that they are going to be helped and helped for better. So we have work to do. We have a lot of work to do, brethren, so let's do it once more, fathers. Happy, happy Father's Day. Maybe this be the best one you have had in years. And God bless us all. Thank you. God bless you too, Sister Matthews, for your encouraging words this morning, knowing full well that our greatest father is God, who gave us the greatest son, Jesus Christ. That's why we are here this morning. Do we have anything from the Sunday school? No. Okay, I believe 
not believe. Today is Father's Day. <laughs> and um, I believe the church has a little something to for the fathers. So I'm not sure who would take charge from here. Sister Cuttle. take the opportunity to extend um, Father's Day greetings to all the fathers in the house. So happy Father's Day to you and I hope that you will have a wonderful day. So at this time I'm going to invite all the fathers to come, come to the front. We have a token on behalf of the church. So all fathers all the fathers
All right, let us put our hands together once more for all of the fathers. Happy Father's Day once again, and I pray that you would have a wonderful day. But before you go, I'm going to pray a blessing upon your life so that God will continue to work on your hearts. So God will continue to use you as you continue this great work. So let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. Father God, today I bring all of the fathers before you. Lord, you know everything about them. So Father, right now I pray that you will touch them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Father God, I pray that your blessing will be upon them. Father God, I pray for a supernatural and uncommon favor over their lives now in the name of Jesus. Father, pray that you will give them strength where they are weak. I pray that, Almighty God, that you will open up doors for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Doors that no man can shut. Father God, I pray that, Almighty God, that you will draw them even closer to you, my God. So, Father God, I pray that you cover their families, my God. I pray that, Almighty God, that you will just make a way where there seems to be no way. And, Father God, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. God bless.